Hello everyone, welcome to the latest in the PhD research video podcast series and I'm delighted that we're joined today by Aladin Boutamin from Hanshla in eastern Algeria and uh, Aladin is a second year a student on the International Structured PhD program here at the University of Limerick. So Aladin, you're very, very welcome today. Delighted that you're with us and I'm really looking forward to talking to you and to hearing more about your research and about your background and about the kind of work you're undertaking at the moment here at UL. Hi, Jared. Thanks for having me. So my name is Aladin Boutamin. Uh, I'm an Algerian PhD student at the University of Limerick. Uh, I've studied for five years uh, in Khanshla University. I've studied English language and culture. Uh, I have then uh, decided to go with a PhD in uh, a structured PhD here at the University of Limerick. My area of academic inquiry is uh, critical discourse analysis and the representation and construction of immigrants and uh, uh, ethnic minorities, ethnic groups, uh, in American and European public discourse. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, excellent, good. And just in terms of your interest in your PhD, you know, what, where did your interest in your PhD come from, Aladine? And you know, and what what made you choose to do a PhD? Even you know, what was the motivation behind that? I think the major motivation for me was was that I always admired the uh, empirical process and the sort of scientific process, empirical, uh, the systematic nature of academic inquiry. So I always find it admirable how we can uh, identify uh, real world problems and find solutions to them uh, through research. That has always been fascinating to me and I think it was a, a great motivation for me to to choose to do a PhD. Uh, um, it is also a, a very morally rewarding and uplifting experience uh, to be able to surround yourself with um, people from the academic community who are brilliant individuals and uh, from whom you learn so much. Excellent and in terms of Doing a PhD can certainly we can certainly see your motivations for doing a doctorate, but why the University of Limerick for your PhD, Aladdin? Yeah, so when uh, when the Algerian Ministry uh, who is funding uh, uh, my scholarship and uh, my cohort scholarships, when we first heard that the contract was signed with the University of Limerick. Uh, I looked it up online. Uh, I, I heard of it before, but I, I really didn't have uh, the nitty gritty, the details of mm. it. So um, I remember uh, looking up uh, Glucksman Library and I was really impressed with, uh, with the storage system of, of, of the data they have of, uh, of the corpora they have in the mm. library, uh, the, uh, just the great publications and the, the system they have, the interlibrary loan system, just found that online and that really uh, helped lead my decision in that direction. Help, you know, it sort of um, certainly way, weighed uh, in favor of me uh, going with a PhD at the University of Limerick. Also, uh, Dr. Moriarty and uh, Professor Holmes visited us, uh, visited us back home in Algeria. That was in 2020 and, uh, uh, you know, in a, for a five days, I got a glimpse of the a really um, admirable level of professionalism and I saw uh, promising prospects um, in, in doing a PhD uh, at the University of Limerick and so I, I went with it. Excellent. No, and it's great that you're here and delighted to have you here. And so could you tell us just in terms of, say, um, a typical day you know doing your PhD and I, I know you said that um, you began your doctorate in 2020 so that would have been when you were based in Algeria at the beginning of the pandemic soon after the beginning or sorry that would have been around the time of the beginning of the pandemic I suppose so could you tell us how your working day has shifted you know has shifted in emphasis since you came to Limerick Aladine? 
So, uh, as you rightly said, Gerard, uh, the beginning of our program coincided with uh, with the worldwide pandemic. So we couldn't travel to Ireland uh, last year. We had to study online. Of course, uh, back then we had uh, a taught component, so we had we had to study modules and also uh, try and uh, narrow down the focus of our PhD. Uh, try to uh, arrive at precise questions and tackle specific problems. Uh, so I think uh, a regular day for me hasn't really changed that much. No. Uh, what I would usually do is um, uh, I'm a morning person, a morning bird. I usually spend three to four hours in the morning uh, on something I call uh, academic effort. So whether it is mm. reading, writing, uh, trying to get into as many workshops, as many uh, conferences, webinars, training as I can, trying to submit as many abstracts as I can. Uh, so I call this the general effort, but it is mainly a thesis writing. So what I would do is uh, spend three to four hours uh, in the morning doing that, take a break for a couple of hours, do whatever, uh, go for a walk, maybe uh, grab some lunch, get back in the afternoon spent to three uh, two to three hours also on the same process so um that's excellent Eladine. so could you tell us could you describe a time you know i know i'm very conscious that as you said you began your research last year uh, but has there been uh, any occasion so far in your doctorate where you have encountered um, a problem or a challenge. And could you tell us how you approach that or what steps you took to mitigate that uh, that problem or challenge uh, in your PhD? You know, as aside as, a, you know, in the context of research, not necessarily anything to do with the pandemic. So. Of course, yeah, so uh, as you know, uh, re re problems and challenges are part and parcel of any research and of any thesis and we can only uh, do so much we can only mitigate them but we cannot totally avoid them so uh, something that comes to mind uh, is uh, something i can recall very vividly is i was writing this uh, section on Im uh, irish immigration policy just the, this last spring semester uh, and uh, I, I really suffered a lack of sources. There was uh, there were there were there was a um, I didn't have a sufficient amount of sources, and I was trying to squeeze every source that I have uh, into as much review as I can write mm. in thesis. Uh, what I what I thought I'd do uh, in response to that is re. Uh, uh, through the reason or reasoning that uh, basically immigration policy is law, I decided to go to the law section, uh, which uh, Glucksman Library has a, a good selection of, a good collection of. So I, I went up there and uh, found books and pamphlet, uh, pamphlets containing statutes and laws. Uh, they were sort of um, immediate and not really what you would you would describe as research discussion, but I I had to make do and I had to uh, use them, review them myself. I also asked for the uh, help of my supervisors. I have two brilliant supervisors, Professor Haynes and uh, Dr. Vaughan, and they both uh, were very helpful and uh, suggested that I use the interlibrary loan system. Uh, which uh, also Glucksman Library provides uh, for UL students. Uh, so I found really good sources, really relevant and also recent uh, mm. in other places, in other universities. Excellent, OK. And so um, in terms of your PhD subject matter, like it sounds really, really fascinating, Aladine. So. We hear a lot about impact, you know, and like the Im impact of the PhD. And you referred earlier, you know, to um, how research can contribute to um, helping to solve real world problems. So what would you say for your own PhD, for your own studies? What would you say or what would you like the impact or what do you envisage the impact of your own PhD research? Um, project, what, what do you envisage it's going to be? 
uh, well, my research has a critical angle to it. Uh, as you know, I'm working on critical discourse analysis and one of um, the errands of a critical discourse analyst is uh, uncovering any patterns of uh, discrimination, unequal power relations, mm. Uh, or racism as manifested in language and discourse. And so I believe that's a, that's a degree of social commitment that I hope my research will be able to, to contribute to. I also, uh, by analyzing and understanding the uh, discourse, uh, Irish discourse on immigration, how politicians in Ireland uh, perceive and construct immigrants in their discourses, particularly in the last five years, I hope to uh, offer insights into the relationship between Irish society and immigrant communities, but also generally host societies and immigrant communities in general. Um, I also wish to uh, provide a better understanding or perhaps uh, uh, a, a different angle to look at the recent rise of right-wing politics we can see in many uh, places in Europe and the United States, the election of President Trump, the Brexit vote, the rise of the right uh, of right-wing parties like UKIP and uh, Le Front National in France. It seems to be a pattern and perhaps a closer look at a different context, say the Irish context in my example, can potentially offer insights into understanding the appeal of these movements. Excellent. And you said there about the has the discourse changed politically in the last you mentioned the last five years. Is there a reason for that? Is that to do with Brexit and Trump and with all these other factors with um, Front National and Fidesz and other parties on the rise, right wing populist parties on the rise? Aladdin. <laughs> Yeah, of course, uh, uh, right or generally far right parties uh, are endemically anti-immigration and uh, hostile to immigration. Mm. Uh, and anti-immigration sentiments and discourses have always existed. But I believe in the last five years, the, the, the second decade, uh, the second half of the last decade, there is this rise of these sentiments to the mainstream. You have the president mm. of the United States uh, basically perpetuating a vulgar, uh, offensive discourse, offensive to many uh, uh, ethnic groups, offensive to many religious groups. And so it's not really those move, uh, those uh, sort of discursive patterns themselves, but th their rise to mainstream politics. Also the case of, in the case of uh, Britain, Brexit, uh, um, the rhetoric of the British Prime Minister, uh, you know. Yeah, so in terms of like impact, so it has very much contemporary overtones, your research and how it can, you know, assess and uh, if you like critically analyze the, the rise of these particular movements uh, throughout Europe, these, these populist and anti-immigrant uh, movement. So that sounds that 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 sounds really really intriguing, Aladine. And um, I would ask just the next question would be about you know just in terms of say you know after looking at impact and after looking at you know say your whole um, doctorate and post graduation. But where would you see yourself in terms of say careers? You know after graduating, we hear a lot about you know that. Uh, the PhD is no longer um, a guaranteed pathway to an academic career. And, but would an academic career be your aspiration after graduation? Um, I, I generally don't want to appear uh, too confident or overconfident, uh, but I, I believe that I should uh, try and uh, get into uh, publishing. After the PhD, I will try to publish as much as I can and uh, uh, investigate uh, other worthwhile problems. Uh, always keep keep um, keep this academic effort. I am the I I view the this academic effort not as a uh, as a temporary commitment for the PhD, but rather as a continuous, ongoing uh, personal passion, really. 
uh, I all, uh, um, of course, it would be very hard to get a professor degree. It would require a uh, monumental uh, amount of effort and dedication, uh, but I will certainly do my best to that end. Excellent. And uh, could I just ask you, in terms of, say, doing a doctorate, how would you see, or what would you see as the advantages of doing a doctorate compared to, um, say, um, a career outside of academia, you know, for someone with your qualifications at the moment? Well, I think that the uh, the most obvious advantage of doing a PhD rather than uh, going with a career is the kind of people you surround yourself with and you find. So in the academic community, as I said previously, you find really brilliant individuals uh, from whom you can learn so much. And uh, it is also about the personal preference. I believe that uh, when you do something uh, about which you are very, uh, about which you feel strongly and uh, you know, you don't feel forced in doing, I believe that the outcomes and the ramifications of that are very fruitful and very uh, rewarding to you uh, personally. Great. I also, uh, I think, oh, sorry. No, please continue. I, I think also career prospects and job prospects are significantly enhanced uh, after doing a PhD. Yes. Absolutely. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And just in terms of the last question I think I have, Aladine, would be just about what advice would you give to someone who's thinking of doing a PhD? Not necessarily a PhD at the University of Limerick, but just somebody who's do, thinking of doing a PhD anywhere in the world. What advice would you give to that person? Yeah, well, what I would uh, advise is sort of build on my last point and say that uh, uh, try to go with something you personally like, something you feel strongly about or you feel passionate about. You know, uh, to, to phrase it uh, in another way, try to uh, do something for a PhD, something you would look up for fun or for personal pleasure. For In my case, for instance, I'm intrigued and constantly fascinated by political discourse and the the sort of uh, uh, injustices and uh, discrimination, unequal power relations found constantly in discourse. Uh, I think that is very fascinating and uh, I, I would I would look it up even if I were uh, if I weren't doing it for a mm. PhD. So what I would also say is understand, have a full understanding that the PhD process is a is a long uh, and uh, challenging process, but uh, also have the confidence that it is perfectly doable and uh, believe in your ability to do it. Of course, given the right amount of uh, commitment and uh, and hard work. Mm. Yeah, that's great. That's uh, top class advice. So, Aladine. I'll just say it was a great pleasure talking to you this afternoon. Really fantastic to get your insights into your research. I know it's at a relatively early stage, but it sounds like it's really, really going to go well. And it sounds like you have just a, a clear uh, pathway devised, you know, from here until graduation. So I think um, I, I'm, I'm sure you'll have an, a fantastic career thereafter, but I'll just wish you for now the very, very best of luck in your uh, research here at the University of Limerick and uh, all the very best in your future career. So thank you very much for contributing to the PhD uh, research video podcast series. Um, it's made a great contribution to uh, the, the, the playlist that we already have. So thank you very much, Aladine. Thank you so much, Gerard. Great to be here. Yeah, great to talk to you. So thanks, Aladine. Thank See you. you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.